way, it's the kind of thing we talked about earlier in Tim's presentation of maybe putting out a sort of template that then is localized for the local tribe or area. Well, if the yeah. crux of, of everything that we do is letting people make choices, then why aren't we letting them make choices? That's mm -hmm. always been my question. It may be a deplorable choice. It may be, I'm going to run out in front of the logging truck, you know, but that's their choice. And so whatever they define, whatever they choose, we can certainly provide more assistance or more information. A push? But um yeah, so I, I agree. I guess that's something that we've been wrestling with for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. And as we go through this process of creating this plan and all the steps we need to to do that, which we'll get into shortly, and keep in mind the essence of all these questions because I think they will come up in different contexts as we do that. Even one of the other, um, you know, things that has come up um, to me since I've been with the ILC, but then also talking to various other people throughout the state, you know, um, about different things, but, um, up well, and about independent living services, but I noticed that in some areas of California, you know, again, here's another one. It's like some, you know, Indian people prefer Native American and others prefer American Indian. And again, it, and it kind of refers to that in, in the booklet. I think actually both of them, but where, I mean, you know, if you don't know, I mean, ask or, or at least listen to hear which, which is preferred in that community. And again, as far as like uh, with the diversity stuff, I mean, it all really does, you know, across the board, the, the technique or the steps really kind of apply. But um, since again, this is specifically about working with Native American people with disabilities. Um, so back to this question though, just to maybe ask, um, I, I think I pretty much already know as far as like um, with the tribes in our area um, early on you know in the 90s I know Hopland and I believe Coyote Valley were were working on you know like um, some ADA guidelines or policies and I don't think that that that's ever actually you know they finalized anything or really kind of go off or refer to any of that um, I know when Hopland was building their casino, though they consulted with our agency at the time, you know, around some of the ADA issues and stuff. Uh, oftentimes, that's a requirement. If you want a casino through, if you want to, if you want to uh, do gaming on your reservation, you have to. The you know one of the provisions is you have to have an agreement with the state, mm -hmm. uh, and. Oftentimes, part of that agreement with the state is that you will adopt all state, you know, uh, state employment laws. You'll ad adopt certain codes, building standards, building standards, and so forth, in order to get, in order to clear that hurdle in terms of uh, putting up a casino. Employment too. Uh, yeah. Employment being there. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's not. It's not one hard and fast. It's a negotiation. So it's not one hard and fast every casino, every tribe is going to have the same agreement, but pretty much if you want a, if, if you, if you're a tribe and you want to create, if you, especially gaming, you want to create a casino, you're going to, the state is going to make you jump through a lot of hoops and they're going to want to, they don't want, they don't want people, they don't want to know, have knowingly allow discrimination or in access. Uh, or anything else on the on the reservations. Um, so um, obviously, then too, as far as uh, you know, talking more about you know some of the service delivery issues to either urban or rural, obviously um, tribes or tribal communities and stuff. Then, then again, you know, I think. Though I think we kind of already know those issues as far as the representatives in, in that are sitting in this room. Obviously, I mean in the rural 
issues, transportation is always a number one issue, not only for our, our ILCs, I mean, staff even to get to work sometimes, but, you know, but from people from, you know, the Indian <coughs> communities to come into town, or for ILC staff to get out to town, or get out of town. Um, so, as far as a question um, on here, obviously, yes, transportation is still an issue. But again, addressing then alternate ways on how to outreach around that, as far as the plan is concerned. You know, so, so again, you know, I think Greg was talking about it and, um, you know, too, it's like there's a, when it's a large service area, what other means of outreach, you know, do you use? Or tools do you use to, you know, to reach the people? I mean, even within your service area, the tribes, they, you know. So, like, what kind, what kind of things do you guys do differently? Like, I know, like, obviously, Vaughn said, you know, I mean, they go out, you know, to and visit, you know, like it was um, the different tribal communities, and then meet at different locations, the clinics, or for a little while, it was like some of the food. Um, what do you call them, the food service, you know, deliveries or whatever, um, come on day basically, but you know. I mean, you know, so, I mean, but again, it's like where the people were, that's where you went. Because people couldn't get down to your office. So, and then like <coughs> Suzanne was saying too, you know, I mean, you guys are on a corner, I mean, so you have three different states. So that's again, how are IELTS services going to apply? But. Okay, so so as far as um, some of these other questions, and again, these are things that we came up with, and I really, we really wanted to hear any, you know, comments or questions or anything as far as again the content in these manuals as opposed to you know the independent living philosophy or services there, and what we would need to modify or how we would even. On number two, mm -hmm. I, I think that would be a question that, that the writers of the manual could tell us about. So, do you know how well the manual has worked? We've heard from actually, um, well, off the top of my head, Humboldt State University has used it, utilized it over the years, and I know. Um, uh, there's another school um, down south that has also utilized it over the years. And again, as a as a resource, but you know, like we talked earlier, I mean, this isn't go. This isn't a tool like a one stop tool for you know for everybody. So you know, the information was really helpful. And as far as like again, working with the tribe, what is um, what's appropriate or what's not, you know, like on page, what is it, page 12, you know, life issue differences. You know, even though it's just a small booklet, but, you know, this information is short and sweet and it's, it's helpful, at least. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. I think it's a good icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, exactly. Okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. This one. Exactly. This is written here. What do you guys think? Right. And then the value system differences. I mean, yeah. again, this is, you know, already, okay. You know, uh, and also the second thing that I've never, you know, but this is what we had available at the time, but, you know, are the, uh, the, the Southwestern <laughs> designs and stuff, but that was the only clip art that's around. That's actually another thing for, like, the folk rehabs uh, that I've been talking about for years too, but I mean, you know, we all have a lot of different artists, you know, talented artists and stuff, but I, you know, as far as like somebody either selling, you know, software or something, you know, for local, even Pomo art or, you know, California art would be great. You know, I mean, to do things like this though, you know, it's actually like even for our website, that would be great to have some, you know, like a, variety of different <coughs> California tribal art. But, um, to, um, oh, go ahead. To 
your question on how does um, the philosophy, the IL philosophy, what would we need to do to tweak it? And forgive me, I'm not really, um, I don't have a good memory. If I'd known that, I would have probably printed it to bring it so I could kind of review the philosophy of IL. But um, I think basically uh, showing respect for American Indian um, nations that a lot of the philosophies are already in keeping with their, their traditions and um, that um, that you're not really trying to cram something down their throat that isn't something that is new to those nations. So for instance, if you just do the ADA, I mean the, um, um, the premise that I'm a person before my disability, um, that is definitely an American Indian belief way mm -hmm. before any ADA was right. ever established. So I think respecting those nations and not undermining them or looking at them as if we have, or the ILs have the answer and their philosophy is the only philosophy. Exactly. Try to show the parallel of, of life and living. Yeah, and that whole concept of inclusivity. Mm -hmm. um, just the whole idea. Well, if you don't understand IL philosophy, then you're not included. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's the part that, to like, you know, you asking the question, well, what about tribal government and ADA? Well, most of the tribal governments don't know anything about ADA. Mm -hmm. And, you know, rather than say, so what do they know? Uh, you know, when, when are we going to, the better question is, when are we going to make those presentations to all those tribal governments? Mm -hmm. When are we going to do that? Or how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. And you who? Know, yeah, and, and when you do it, you know, you're going to have somebody grouchy or somebody nice or, somebody, you know, right. well, it makes what's it the deal, yeah. you know, and, and so it's more like that rather than those kind of, these are, these are really good starting points to begin the conversation. <coughs> they're, they're, um, um, that's all they are, you know, uh -huh. and you guys know that when yeah. you go to Right. right, exactly. Oh, well, can we ask next, you know? Exactly. Yeah, and, I, and that's why I appreciate the effort. And, and I have to say, I, did, I didn't answer the question, so I, well, I, and can't, I can't throw rocks very far. <laughs> well, again, as far as the, you know, for the, like I said, when I spoke to people individually, though, too, you know, a few times over the last few months and stuff, you know, I mean, the, the tribes obviously, you know, know how to, well, in some cases, you know, help reach to your to yourself. I mean, to the different programs, and obviously, again, when we're talking about disabilities, and, and there's that that bad word again. You know, I don't actually, and now I, I'm trying to, to think since I've been here this morning, though. But when I go out, if I go to a, the res or whatever to meet a client, I I don't actually use the word disability. Um, it is on obviously our I, our agency. You know, if I'm going to do open a, a case or something, you know, an ILP, an independent living plan or something like that. But but I can't even think about how um, you know. I don't think I even use a word really. You know, I mean, we just talk about what's what's going on.